Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. And I wanted to use this video to basically explain how we can find the diameter or the size of the sun. Now this is very similar to how we were actually measure the size of the moon as well, which I've also done a video on. So the, the, basically the underlying method is pretty much the same. We're just gonna apply it to the sun. So in order for us to calculate the size or the diameter of the sun, or radius actually, because that's just gonna be half the diameter, is we need to find the distance to the sun. Now there's a few different ways you can do that, and the way I'm gonna show you is by using kind of the orbit of the Earth. So how would we do that? Well, first we need to actually know is the semi-major axis of Earth's orbit. We can take that then as the average distance between the Earth and the sun, because the semi-major axis is essentially half the major axis of the ellipse of the orbit. So Earth's orbit is not perfectly circular, it's an ellipse and the semi-major axis is essentially half of the major axis along the ellipse. That is essentially going to be the average distance between the Earth and the Sun during one orbital period. So we need to calculate that. Now, how do we do that? So, okay, this is our major axis basically here, so we just want to take half of that. The minor axis is on the other direction, essentially. That's the shortest distance on the ellipse. So what do we need to do? Well, we can use Kepler's third law to find the semi major axis, which is A here. Now on the right hand side there, you've got the gravitational constant, you've got the mass of the sun, and you've got P, which is the orbital period of Earth. And that's gonna then, well, you divide that by four pi squared. So we would assume that at this point, we kind of have the mass of the sun from some other method. If not, we'd have to calculate that as well. So what we then need to do is put it in terms of just the semi-major axis, so we take the cube root. This P then is then the orbital period of the Earth, which we can calculate relatively straightforward. Again, there's a few different ways this can be done, but what you can actually do is you can look at the kind of, the orbital period of the Earth relates to the movement of the sun in the sky. So if you were to look at the sun in the sky at the same point every day, it, it's naturally going to change. That's what gives us kind of our change in days. So our days get shorter and longer. Uh, our seasons change, things like that. We have the solstice, equinoxes. Those can help us give us the cycle, essentially, which is one trip all the way around the sun, which is the orbital period of Earth. So we can essentially use our calculation of the year from the seasons and things like that. That can give us our orbital period. Again, there's a few other ways that actually this can actually be done. I'm just pointing out one of them. So essentially, if we do that, put it into the equation before, then we end up with Earth's orbit as one AU, which is a standard unit, that's one astronomical unit, but it also relates to 149.6 million kilometers as well, if you want it in kilometers, or you can do it in meters, whatever. So now that we have the distance to the sun, now this is just, this is not correct sizing. This is just maybe how we might see it from the Earth. Now, we need to measure the angular diameter of the sun. So if we were to look at the sun from Earth, it will create an angular size on the sky. So we can actually measure that angle. If the sun was closer, it would have a bigger angular diameter because the angle kind of increases. If it was further away, it would be smaller, so the angular diameter will be less. So we can actually measure the angular diameter of the sun on the sky. And again, because Earth is orbiting around the sun, it gets further away and closer during one year. It means the average angular diameter of the sun does kind of change. But if we take the average one, it's around about a half a degree. Now, interestingly, that's pretty much the same angular diameter as the moon, which is kind of important for things like eclipses and things like that, because they perfectly eclipse each other. So about half a degree is our angular diameter. We've got the distance to the sun as well. Now, for small angles, we can use this approximation at the top. So theta, our angular diameter, is approximately equal to the diameter of the sun divided by the distance and then we can essentially get the diameter. If we rearrange that for the diameter of the sun, then we can essentially calculate that straight, relatively straightforward anyway. And if we do that, we end up with just under 
1,400,000 kilometers for the diameter. Now, obviously, it depends which way around, because actually the sun is not perfectly spherical, and it is kind of wider at certain parts than other parts. But anyway, if we were to do this, kind of with this method, we get approximately the, this sort of value here. And again, the same method can be used for calculating the diameter of the moon, and maybe other objects as well. If, if you, you can actually get a distance to it, you can get an angular size, you can also get the actual proper linear diameter or size of an object as well. So thank you for watching, and if you found the video helpful or useful or interesting, then do consider becoming a member. There's extra videos in the member section, and also it just generally helps support the channel as well. So thank you for watching.